In this video, we're going to talk about the Tollens test, the Lucas reagent, and also the chromic acid test. But let's focus on the Tollens test first. So the Tollens reagent is specific for aldehydes. It will show a positive test for any aldehyde. It can also show a positive test for certain alpha hydroxy ketone functional groups. But if you take in organic chem 1 or 2, for the most part, if you see an aldehyde, the Tollens reagent is going to oxidize it. So the Tollens reagent is basically a mixture of the silver 1 cation complexed with ammonia under alkaline conditions. And it's going to oxidize the aldehyde into the deprotonated form of a carboxylic acid or a carboxylate group. So perhaps you heard of the silver mirror test. Let's say if you put glucose with silver, ammonia, and some hydroxide. And if you warm it up, you'll see that on the inside of a glass container, it's going to form basically a silver mirror. You can look it up, though, but it's called the silver mirror test. Now, let's propose a mechanism for this reaction. Now, the hydroxide ion is attracted to the carbonyl carbon which has a positive charge. So it can act as a nucleophile, attacking the carbon, breaking the pi bond. So right now we have a species that looks like this. So this oxygen has a negative charge. And now it's attracted to the silver plus one cation. In ammonia, silver is attached to two ammonia molecules. It's complex to it the net charge is still a positive charge. Now this oxygen is going to attach itself to the silver ion. And so right now, we have an intermediate that looks like this. So what do you think is going to happen next? In the next step, we can use a base to remove the alpha hydrogen. That is the hydrogen that's attached to the carbon that has the two oxygen atoms. This is going to grab the hydrogen. Those electrons will be used to form a double bond, expelling the silver species. So now we have a carboxylic acid, which won't last very long under basic conditions. So another hydroxide ion is going to remove this hydrogen. So we're going to get the carboxylate ion. So that's the mechanism for the Tollens reagent. That's how you can oxidize an aldehyde into a carboxylate ion using silver. Now we mentioned that the Tollens reagent can work for certain alpha hydroxy ketones. Let's understand why. So here is an alpha hydroxy ketone. Under acidic or even under basic conditions, this can convert into an aldehyde. Let's propose a mechanism for the conversion of a ketone to an aldehyde. And we know that the Tollens reagent is specific for aldehydes. So what do you think is going to happen first? We need to remove an alpha hydrogen. For a ketone, the alpha hydrogen is one carbon away from the ketone. And under basic conditions, we can use hydroxide to help us to do that. And once it gets rid of the alpha hydrogen, we're going to get an enolate species. The carbon-hydrogen bond is going to break and those electrons move here. Now the carbon with a negative charge is stabilized by resonance. This lone pair can move here, forming a double bond, breaking a pi bond. So here we have an enolate ion next to an OH group.
and it's going to grab a hydrogen from water, giving us an ene diol. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use the hydroxide that was just formed to remove the other hydrogen, this hydrogen. So now what's going to happen is it's going to turn into the aldehyde in the next step. So this oxygen is going to use one of its lone pairs to regenerate the carbonyl group, causing this pi bond to grab a hydrogen. So the hydrogen is going to be added here. And now we have an aldehyde, which can react with a silver cation. So now you can see one of the reasons why alpha hydroxy ketones may be susceptible to the Tollens reagent. Now what about the Lucas reagent? The Lucas reagent is great for determining the type of alcohol you have in the solution. So if you have a primary alcohol, it's going to react slowly with the Lucas reagent. It can take longer than six minutes to react, so it's very, very slow. Now, if you have a secondary alcohol in solution, the Lucas reagent won't take too long to oxidize it. It might be anywhere from one to five minutes. Now, with a tertiary alcohol, it reacts quickly, less than one minute. So it's very fast for tertiary alcohols. So the Lucas reagent helps you to determine what type of alcohol um, you have in the solution, if it's primary, secondary, or tertiary. Now, let's understand why a tertiary alcohol reacts so fast with the Lucas reagent. So let's propose a mechanism to show it. So here we have terbutanol, which is a tertiary alcohol. The reason why it's tertiary is because the OH is attached to a carbon that is attached to three other carbon atoms. The Lucas reagent comprises of zinc chloride and hydrochloric acid. Now zinc chloride is the Lewis acid that activates the reaction. Right now, OH is a bad leaving group. However, we can turn it into a good leaving group by putting a positive charge on the oxygen. So the oxygen is going to attach itself to the zinc chloride group. And whenever oxygen has three bonds, it will have a plus charge, which makes it a good leaving group. And so this particular species will ionize, producing a tertiary carbocation. Now this is the slow step, the formation of a carbocation intermediate. Tertiary carbocations are more stable than secondary and primary carbocations. Because of that, that's why the reaction proceeds quickly with a tertiary alcohol, is because tertiary carbocations are more stable. Now the Cl and HCl at this point will combine with the carbocation, producing a product, which is an alkyl chloride. So in the end, the alcohol will be replaced with a Cl, but the reaction works faster for tertiary alkyl halides, I mean tertiary alcohols, because tertiary carbocations are more stable, so it's easier to form that carbocation intermediate. Now what about the chromic acid test? What is it useful for? The chromic acid test helps you to identify primary and secondary alcohols. It's going to give a positive test for those two alcohols. It doesn't react with tertiary alcohols. Now let's understand why. If we have a primary alcohol and if we add chromic acid to it, it's going to oxidize it to a carboxylic acid. So you're going to have a positive test. There's going to be a change in color. The color changes from orange to blue-green. It's orange whenever you have the chromium-6 ion in a solution. Chromic acid has an oxidation state of plus 6 for the chromium atom. Eventually, chromium is going to be reduced through a series of steps, and it's going to reach the plus 3 oxidation state. So it's going to change from orange to a, a blue-green color. 
So because the primary alcohol reacts with chromic acid, as the alcohol is oxidized, the chromium is reduced. So there's going to be a color change. Also, if you have a secondary alcohol, and if you use uh, chromic acid, it's going to be oxidized to a ketone. And so secondary alcohols will show a positive test in the same way as the primary alcohol. Now tertiary alcohols are resistant to oxidation. So therefore, you're not going to get any reaction, which means that you're going to get a negative test for the chromic acid test. The color won't change from orange to blue-green. So that is it for this video. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.